Hey guys, what's up? Mai here, and today I'm going to be continuing my playthrough of Project Zomboid. Now, I know it has been a few days, but, <coughs> excuse me, but, um, I did get a new hard drive. I have reformatted. Uh, unfortunately, I did lose part of the save file, so we're maybe one extra day ahead than what we should be. But, you know, that's okay. Let's just jump straight into this. So, we have leveled up. And I would like to level into sprinting again, because actually the other day I was playing a new character. And he couldn't run at all. He could barely cover any distance, but just having these two levels in, I can run so far across the map. But unfortunately, it doesn't look like I can actually level into that. However, I think I will go into light-footed. I am going to avoid sneaking, because I'm not 100% sure, but just based off the two different names of the skills... Sneaking sounds like it would be more beneficial if you're actually trying to sneak, whereas light-footed sounds like it would be more beneficial when you're running, when you're walking, you know, you'd just make a little bit less noise when you're doing those kind of things. And I'm not a really big fan of sneaking around, it does take quite a lot of time and you do lose lots of your day. So, you know, usually I'm pretty run and gun, I guess you could say. But anyway, let's just level into light-footed. Yes, let's go for that. And done. Okay, so we're still at our safe house, but unfortunately I have actually dropped all of my items, so we are going to have to go through and just pick up a few of them. And as you can see, I am very, very hungry. This this isn't, mu this isn't much good at all. So we want to get our weapons. Okay, so I'm liking the idea of that kitchen knife. We've got five logs too, which I will drop, or which I will pick up, because we've got three logs here, so we will be able to make two wooden walls. If we go in here, okay, so we still got a base for that shotgun, so we don't need any of that stuff. What we do need, though, is food. And actually, I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but I am really, really low on food. So I guess one option could be to actually go through and, you know, start cooking up some of my cans. But I can't actually remember where I chucked the rest of my food. So yeah, this is where I ended up dropping all of my items off last time. And I mean, we don't want half of these things. But we'll just we'll just take the light ones with us for now, just so we can see what's in here. Okay, so lots of doorknobs. Don't need those. Okay, we'll take the hinges, the doorknobs, the hammer. Ooh, TV dinner, nails, axe, can openers, sledgehammer, watermelon. Holy crap, we've got everything in here. And I will also take those two there, just so we can organize this. So sorry if this is a little bit boring, but you know, it's it's got to get done. So right off the bat, we'll just we'll go through and... Of course, I don't have my saw on me, but that's okay. We'll just go back over. And it will be in one of these. There we go. Okay, so there we go. We have our saw. Turn these into five wooden planks. We'll take our eight wooden planks over. And now we're going to make ourselves a door. Oh, not a door. There are two wooden walls. So let me just grab these nails. There we go. Okay, so we got two wooden walls. Great. Let's actually drop these off. I'm going to take that out of the inventory because I will be placing it. We'll chuck our nails back because we don't actually need them. And we need to drop our. S no, I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep the sledgehammer on me. I think because it is. It is pretty effective. It doesn't weigh too much, I guess. Okay, there was a drawer for miscellaneous things. There we go. So we got our pencils and our pen, which we don't need. And if we actually go down to this one here as well, we can also drop off our doorknobs and one of our axes. We don't need two, we just need one. And this is why I had to drop the axe on the floor last time, because it was just a huge pain trying to drop these off. This interface is going to be the death of me, I'll tell you that much. The developers have actually said though, I, was, I read on the forum, one of them said that they will be remaking the interface completely, which I look forward to. Because look at this, we've already wasted half a day just going through trying to pick items up. It's it's a pain. But 
you know, it's got to get done, I guess. So we just eat three pieces of watermelon, and we're going to also eat our cooked TV dinner, which actually made us quite unhappy. But, you know, beggars can't be choosy. So let's drop this watermelon off. Let's write in our journal to make ourselves feel a little bit better. And there we go. Okay, so today, like I said, we are going to actually just quickly run out, try to find ourselves some food. I did cover this in one of my tutorial videos, but hopefully we can find ourselves a couple of vending machines. Because, you know, usually they have a pretty big payout. And I also, there's a, there's a kitchen in town, or a diner or something, and out the back it has three completely filled fridges. So I also want to try to find that area today. Now before I do, it's actually getting kind of late. Ah. Okay, it looks like we might be doing that tomorrow, but I've noticed something. My water bottles aren't filling up, so it's either this doesn't work, or the water gets turned off after 15 days, and then the electricity gets turned off after 30. And I think it might actually be that, because I can't seem to get water from any faucets. I've tried it on other faucets too, and yeah, no luck. Okay. So I suspect there are going to be a few zombies up here near the barricades, like there usually are. No, nothing. Oh, that's a first. How is the health going? It's actually kind of interesting to note that all of these barricades here have full health. However, the barricades over the other side that completely blocked off the path, every single one of them got knocked down. So maybe the zombies won't actually go to destroy them unless it's actually blocking off their path completely. Perhaps. Perhaps. So, ooh, it looks like we have some potential survivors hiding out in this building. And before I actually started recording, I did see a survivor run past me again into the supermarket. And he was shooting off his shotgun like an absolute madman. So I might have to go check that out. But, you know, if they've got the shotgun, I want to be careful because, you know, if they're, if they're friendly. Like, look at it this way. If you're in a zombie apocalypse yourself and, you know, you come across people with a gun, are you really going to kind of, holy crap, are you really going to kind of put that stress on yourself, that risk that, you know, they could be hostile, they might not be friendly? So, you know, we'll, we'll be a little bit cautious. We'll probably try to kill them again, I guess. Because, you know, that's, that's just how we deal with survivors at the moment. Because I really don't like shotguns going off next door to my house. Just don't like it at all. Wow, so we actually found a few cartons of cigarettes in there. Which, we might, which hopefully we don't ever have to use. But, you know, if we ever need to, just to alleviate some stress or something, you know, it's, it is a possibility. Okay, so how's the zombie situation looking? So, so I guess this is where Lightfooted kind of comes in handy, because as a zombie, actually looked like it had a hard time, you know, detecting me walking up behind it. Even this guy here, he doesn't even know I'm here. I'm standing right behind him. I could follow him around. Oh, he saw me that time. And I should also point out that my chest seems to have healed up. I seem to have avoided uh, becoming infected after my second scratch. So my guy is pretty damn lucky. But there are quite a lot of zombies actually hanging outside. And this is why I hate the other survivors. They, they start shooting off their shotguns and then, you know, all of a sudden there seems to be, you know, extra zombies roaming around. Look at that. I don't think I've ever seen this many right outside a house. It's just, just down there. So because we don't want to strain ourselves too much, we are going to be switching to the knife. And I actually have had comments of people saying, you know, I should just use the fire axe. It, you know, it never breaks kind of thing. But the problem with using the fire axe is it strains you out a lot more. So I could swing this knife pretty much forever. And while they do break, you know, they're still one-shot kills. And they don't use up too much energy. So that's kind of my reasoning behind them. And look at this. we got zombies down here in the parking lot. That is... A little worrying, so let's just check this out a little bit. Have a quick squeeze down the back. 
Both of our barricades up here are still holding up pretty well, so that's good. Okay, let's let's go inside. Let's eat some food and get ready to rest. Now tomorrow we will have more time, so we will venture out a little bit further and actually get some food. Okay, that's pretty good. And what happened to all of my watermelon? Why is it in my inventory? Okay, there we are, that's looking pretty good. And we also want to get our hammer ready for tomorrow. Okay, so I'll quickly set my hotkeys. And sledgehammer can be three. I accidentally set it to two. Okay, there we go. Looking pretty good. Pretty full, and we are very tired. So with that, let's go to bed and end day one. See, why am I a nervous wreck all of a sudden? Because it looks like I've healed fine. It's still bandaged, but... So, you know, what the, what the hell is this? Why am, why am I queasy? Okay, we're just going to ignore this for the first day, but if this keeps up... It looks like, you know, we might be facing an infection. And the crappiest thing about it is it could have just been avoided if I just chucked my vest on. You know, maybe, maybe they wouldn't have been able to scratch me then, because every single time I've been scratched, it's always been on the chest. So I guess I really do need to keep a good eye out for that. So we're not, we're not having a good day, but... You know, at the moment, it could be could be many different things. I, c I could have food poisoning or something, you know, I could have eaten some spoiled food. Might just be feeling a little bit ill. I know I don't have the hypochondria trait, but... You know, if you're in a zombie apocalypse, I don't know about you guys, but... If I started feeling ill... I would... I'd freak out pretty fast. The first thing that I would start thinking is, oh crap, you know, I've, I've caught the disease or something like that. So... It's, it's a possibility, I think I'm kind of grasping at straws a little bit here, but... Alright, fingers crossed. So yeah, I don't want to bother too much with canned food, because I've already got lots of canned food, it's just... Canned food is kind of a pain, because every single time you want it, you actually have to go through and craft it. Okay, so that survivor that did run in here the other night is gone once again. And there's a blood patch over there, actually, with no body around it. Or is that a body? What is that behind that counter? Hmm. I'm not sure it actually... Oh, okay, yeah, that does actually look like a zombie body. You can kind of see the head outline there a little bit. Okay, never mind that then. Okay, so we do have what I think is a school, actually. It, it looks a lot like a school or like a college or something. And I know that these are there. Have I raided them before, though? It does look like it. But I didn't take all the soda cans last time. And we have a zombie in the bathroom. And what is what is with these toilets? Why are they lined up? Don't these people have any any decency? And hey, we have a sweater actually. And I prefer the sweater to a vest because we do spend a lot of time out at night. Uh, you know, more so lately because we've started to become a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more experienced in this world. We have leveled up quite a few times, so, you know, if we need to get back very fast, you know, night time isn't so much of an issue for us anymore like it used to be. So I'll take that, because it would get a bit chilly. So my guy's getting bored. How you get bored in a zombie apocalypse is beyond me. So lollipop, some more soda. We've got plenty of matches, so we're not going to worry about those. 
but I am going to pick up a notebook. Notebooks, notebooks are a great way to, uh, you know, alleviate boredom. And we've also got some chips in that desk, but that's about it. So I can actually see a few zombies in this place here. Okay, make quick work of them. And yeah, wow, it's it's really actually, it, it feels very beneficial that I have, you know, this light footed leveled up a couple of times. That zombie didn't even see me or hear me go in. So it's it's definitely paying for itself. Now, yeah, we'll take the coffee. And we don't need any of that stuff there. Is there anything upstairs we can grab quickly? I know I have probably have been through these houses a few times before, but in the past, I guess, food hasn't been a huge priority. And is that zombie stuck behind the stairwell? Oh, mate, I don't even know how you do that. I almost feel bad for the poor guy. Look at him. He's, he's just walking into walls. Okay, so my guy's a little bit peckish, but that's okay. What do we got? We got a lollipop. Some crisps. And we'll have the soda to wash it down. Just clear these zombies out on the football field nice and quick. And... You know what, I'm actually, I know I said all that about the axe, not using it, but I'm actually a little bit paranoid about it at the moment. Uh, you know, about being bitten again, so I'm going to use that. Just because it does have a longer reach. And because it's bigger, you know, you'd imagine the chance to miss would be lower. Holy crap, there's a lot of zombies here. Okay, so they are starting to climb the fence. Okay, so we've got to be careful here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is actually kind of run circles around them. And it's good to do this because the way the zombie AI actually works, it kind of allows you to herd them up a little bit. And when you get the sledgehammer, Big groups of zombies like that are so easy to take down, and it knocks them all so far back. It might not kill them all, but it does damage to them all. Look how easy that is. Holy crap, you can almost make a sport out of this. Okay, so we'll switch back to our knife now, I guess, just to quickly take them out. And there's one more over here. Oh, one more. Holy crap, there's another group of them. Okay, so let's try herd them back a little bit, I guess. Take out a sledgehammer, because we do have three that are fairly close together. So if I run this way... We should be able to make pretty easy work of these guys. And once again, my going out for food has kind of just flown out the window, just trying to deal with these zombies. Okay, so we got two more coming straight for me. And I'll try kite them around here. Because other than those two, it didn't look like the other zombies had actually seen or detected me. Okay, so we got one more coming. Hopefully this is the last. No, no it's not. Fine, let's, let's just go into the bathroom quickly. And rule number one of the zombie apocalypse, stay out of bathrooms because zombies love them. Look at that, there's a zombie in there. Wow, well, surprisingly enough, there's not a zombie in that bathroom. Okay. So we've got to be careful because we've got one coming up behind us too. Can we clear out this last bathroom? Okay, we're actually looking pretty set. 
So we didn't get much food today, but you know, we managed to take out another percentage of the hoard, I guess. And yes, I know that wasn't hoard, I said percentage. Okay, so yeah, look at that moderate exhaustion. Whereas if I was using the knife, that wouldn't have happened. And we want to take out all the zombies along the streets as well. Because we do not want them following us to our home. So far we've been completely safe. I mean, the only zombies that we were probably the closest we got were those zombies out there near the window. But other than that, all good. So I'm not actually all that hungry at the moment. I'm still a little bit queasy. And I'm anxious because of that. But I can't actually remember if... Because it says it's bandaged, and it doesn't say... It says it's okay as well. So it makes me think that the scratch is healed, but... You know, is it still possible to get infected after it's been healed, or what? Let's eat some more of our healthy watermelon, get us some carbohydrates. Just uh, try to overcome this squeeziness. And with that, we will go to bed and we will level up. Okay, so what skills do we have at the moment? See, I keep leveling up. Oh, swinging leveled up once again. So, yeah, I'm going to go into that just so, you know, I can use the heavier weapons like the sledgehammer and things like that without actually tiring myself out as fast. Okay, so with that, I'm nauseated. I'm a nervous wreck. So that's actually concerning. Um, it looks like this playthrough might actually be coming to an end. Not to worry, I've got 84 shotgun shells and a shitload of whiskey. If if I'm going to die, I'm going to take out as many of these sons of bitches as I can. But I will be leaving that for another day. So if you guys like this episode, be sure to give it a thumbs up, favorite, and subscribe. And you know, also be sure to check out my website in the description below. See you guys very soon for another episode.